Let's learn stereoselective and stereospecific reactions with a simple example which you will never forget. Suppose there are three pens that you are given and the teacher decides that which pen you will choose for writing. So you have basically no choice and the and the color of the paint completely depends upon your teacher. And on the other hand, uh, think that you uh, you are the person who is deciding the uh, uh, you know the color of the pen okay so basically what you have is a choice right so in this case let's consider the teacher as a reactant and the pen is the stereochemistry and you are the product okay so when the teacher decides you have no choice so your stereochemistry of the product completely depends upon the reactant so reactant decides it depends upon the stereochemistry of the reactant this is called a stereospecific reaction and when you decide when you have a choice so where the product decides product chooses what to be formed that is called a selective that also answers you know explains these words selective and specific so the teacher is very specific the reactant is very specific about the product the product is selective it can choose out of the many isomers it can choose any one isomer and that is formed major in specificity you don't have a choice in stereoselectivity there is a choice in selectivity out of the multiple products one is formed in a major amount and one is formed in a minor amount whereas in specific reaction uh, because the reactant decides the stereochemistry of the product it is always 100% of a particular stereoisomer or a 50-50 that is a racemic mixture okay and the choice of the pen uh, may be uh, it may depend on your mood whatever the pens are available to you okay so similarly the choice or the major product depends upon the various uh, factors like you know uh, energy of activation uh, steric hindrance and so on so let's study this in more detail so if you want to define a specific stereo specific reaction it is uh, you can define it as a reaction in which stereochemically different reactants so reactants are also stereochemically different which may result in stereochemically different products so everything is decided by the starting material stereochemistry of the starting material and stereospecificity may be either 100% or it could be partial 50-50 Okay, for example, SN2 reaction. Uh, it is a one-step reaction where bond formation and bond breaking is taking place simultaneously. So wherever this leaving group is there, the nucleophile attacks from backside of the leaving group. So depending upon the position of the leaving group, you will get a particular product. For example, for R configuration, because the attack is from the backside, there is 100% inversion and you get S configuration. If it is S, you will get R. Getting it? So, it is 100% inversion. The stereochemistry of this product, the S is dependent on what? The R. So, it depends upon the stereochemistry of the reactant. And there is only one mechanistic pathway available. So, the whole product, stereochemistry of the product is decided by the stereochemistry of the reactant. Similar reaction is epoxidation which is concerted in nature one step. So, now there are two uh, possibilities of attack. One is from the upper side and from the lower side. Okay, uh, considering it planar. Now, when you have these types of attacks if you look at the energy level for both the attacks it is same so the energy both are having again same mechanistic pathway right hence formation is 50 50 that is a racemic mixture and the product formed are mirror images for example if you take trans trans to butene it is going to result in a racemic mixture and if you take cis to butene it is going to result in a meso compound okay so formation of meso depends on what the reactant that is cis to butene formation of racemic mixture depends on what that is the trans to butene so this is a stereo specific reaction
Similarly, there are other examples like osmium tet uh, tetroxide, which is an hydroxylation reaction, KMnO4 hydroxylation reaction. Formation of this meso depends on what the reactant, the cis form. Formation of the racemic mixture depends on what the trans form. Similarly, for malic acid, cis isomer gives meso tartaric acid, trans isomer gives plus minus, that is the racemic mixture. All these were stereospecific reaction. Now, what is stereoselective reaction? Out of the different possibilities of the product, one of the product is formed in a larger amount. Okay, that is a stereoselective reaction. For example, if you look at this, uh, uh, hydrogenation of this compound gives you 68% of the cis form and you one major and one minor. So, this is a selective reaction. Now, what does it depend upon? See here also, one is major, one is minor. What are the deciding factors over here? It's a steric hindrance, electronic effects, other aspects that are leading to the stereochemistry of the reactant. So, out of the different isomers, one of the isomer is formed in a measure amount. For example, epoxidation of 3-methyl cyclohexane. So, there are two possibilities of attack of formation of an epoxide. One is the top phase attack which is more hindered because of the methyl group so this epoxide which is formed it is an, on the same side so definitely there is a steric hindrance steric hindrance means it is less stable less stable means it is having more energy if it attacks from the opposite side of the methyl group there is less steric hindrance less steric hindrance less energy more stable right that is why this one gives you the major form and this attacks gives you the minor form Okay, so both on the same side, so you get the this type of structure, both methyl and the epoxide are on the same side. Because it is sterically more hindered, it is formed in minor quantity. Here it is sterically less hindered, it is formed in a major quantity. So what is the deciding factor over here for major product? It is the steric hindrance, right? And hence it is a seroselective reaction, it is neither 100% nor 50-50. Similar example we can give for this reduction reaction with aluminium hydride. So again same thing if you attacks from the same side of where the methyl group is there there is more steric hindrance so energy is high. Here when it attacks from the opposite side there is less steric hindrance energy is low. So one of the product is major one is minor. So all these factors decides the stereoselectivity. Depending upon out of the enantiomers, if one of the enantiomer is formed in major compound, in major amount or selectively, we call it as enantioselective reaction. So, out of the two possible isomers, one is formed in major and one is formed in minor. So, you can see these two are mirror images of each other. One is plus lactic acid and one is minus lactic acid. So, the plus one is formed in a major pro amount and the minus is formed in a minor amount. Okay, so this is called as out of the two enantiomer, one enantiomer is in major quantity, hence it is called as enantioselective reaction. Similarly, we have diastereoselective reactions. Again, the definition goes like this out of the many diastereoselective diastereomers available, one is formed selectively as a major compound. For example, alkyne, if you want, uh, carry out the hydrogenation or reduction of this, the cis isomer is a major when you use hydrogen by uh, palladium barium sulfate that is Lindlas catalyst and when you use sodium in liquid ammonia, you are getting uh, trans as a major product. Okay, so again, this is called as what diastereo selectivity. Similar example, you can see over here, 98% of trans is formed and 2% of cis is formed. So all these are nothing but what selective and stereo specific reaction. Selective reactions are what? One of the stereo isomer is formed predominantly. Specific is what? The reactant decides the stereochemistry of the product. It could be either 100% or 50-50%. And now there goes a popular statement. All stereospecific reactions are stereoselective. You choosing a blue pen will come under the class of students selecting a black pen and blue pen also. So you can come under those category. But then the other students who are selecting between blue and black, they can't come in your category because you are very specific of using a blue pen. That is why st all stereoselective reactions are not necessarily stereo specific. 
we'll see some examples where the reactions are both stereo specific and selective and some examples when the reactions are stereo selective and not stereo specific now this is an example where the reaction is both selective and specific this is e2 elimination where the bromine or the leaving groups are anti to each other are opposite side okay so this h and this br are opposite to each other so when the base attacks this h is removed br is removed from here you get this compound okay so for erythro you get the e form and for 3o where they are on the same side the bond rotates and then once they become anti to each other elimination takes place and you get this form so 3o gives you what z form erythro gives you what e form stereochemistry of the reactant depends on what stereochemistry uh, sorry stereochemistry of the product depends on stereochemistry of the reactant hence it is stereo specific right and out of the two isomers which are possible one is formed selectively in this case so this is also a stereo selective reaction so as i said all stereo specific reactions are stereo selective one more example we can give is addition of halogens to the alkenes this is again anti addition opposite side bromine attacks both the bromine attack from the they are on the opposite side so formation of racemic mixture depends on what cis to butene formation of meso compound depends on what trans to butene so bromination is again what a stereo specific reaction because meso you will get only when you use trans you won't get meso if you use cis if you use cis uh, if you use cis form you are going to get a racemic mixture another reaction is hydroxylation of alkenes if you look at the hydroxylation reaction uh, kmno4 again it is uh, uh, when you use now these are the products uh, these are the isomers okay so these are the enantiomers and all three are the diastereomers so when you these are the possible products that could be formed when you use a trans isomer or trans to butene you are getting what ss and rr okay and when you are using a uh, cis uh, alkene you are getting a meso compound so formation of meso again depends upon stereochemistry of the reactant that is whether it is cis or trans and formation of uh, ss and rr that is a racemic mixture depends upon trans because it is so out of the uh, you know three possible isomers when you use trans this is formed selectively hence it is also a selective reaction out of the three isomers for this the meso is formed selectively hence it is also a stereo selective reaction let's see some example for stereo selective but not specific okay now to have to be stereo specific the uh, the reaction the the there has to be stereo isomerism at first place so for example if you look at this this is an alkyne it doesn't have any stereo isomer okay because it is not having any stereo isomer it won't give you a specific product so out of the different possibilities one will be in the major amount so this is always a stereo selective here also it does not have a stereo isomer so this is the product again it is formed selectively right again in this case it doesn't depend on what the stereochemistry of your reactant is because you are always going to get this product this proportion e will be in 95% and z will be in 5% so all these uh, you know examples you it tells you that to have to to be a stereo specific reaction uh the one of the factor is the stereo uh, there should be stereo isomerism that is uh, there should be uh, the reactant should be a stereo isomer if the reactant is not a stereo isomer as such it won't give you a specific reaction so as you can see the reactants are to be stereo isomers of each other and the products are also stereo isomers of each other and that is a stereo specific reaction in selective reaction one of, one of the product is major one of the product is minor and the, this could be enantio selectivity or diastereo selectivity if you look at this the first reaction is giving 50 50% so that is a specific in this case it is giving you one major one minor both are enantiomers of each other hence it is a stereo selective reaction
okay so this was all about stereo selectivity and specificity thank you so much